on the way to the office. It's a all of a five minute drive. Been doing it uh, for 54 years. One of the good things about this five minute drive is that uh, on the way there's a uh, McDonald's, so I'll pick up something. Good morning. Thank you for choosing McDonald's. Go ahead and order whenever you're ready. I'll have a uh, sausage McMuffin with uh, egg and cheese. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. And I tell my wife as I shave in the morning, I say either 261, 295, or 317. And she puts that amount in a little cup by me here, and that determines which of three breakfasts I get. Okay, 295. There's How the you tools. doing, son? Hey, great. You're on right. candid camera. I see. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> when I'm not feeling quite so prosperous, I might go with the 261, which is two sausage patties, and then I put them together and uh, pour myself a Coke. Hi, how are you? 317 is a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit, but the market's down this morning, so I think I'll pass up the 317 and go for the 295. Grade school where somebody did something for the king and the king said, what can I do for you? And he said, well, let's take a chessboard and put one kernel of wheat on the first square and then double it on the second and double it on the third. And the king readily agreed to it. And by the time he figured out what two to the 64th <laughs> amounted to, he was giving away the entire kingdom. So it's a pretty simple concept. But over time, it accomplishes extraordinary things. Berkshire is an amazing company, the fourth largest company in the Fortune 500. He is the only person who has ever, from scratch, built a company that is in the top 10 of the Fortune 500. Well, Berkshire is a holding company of sorts. It owns a large number of separate businesses that operate independently of each other and to a great extent from the parent company, Berkshire Hathaway. We have maybe 70, maybe 80 businesses, and we ask them to behave in a way that doesn't hurt our reputation at Berkshire Hathaway, but they run their own lives. Other people do most of the decorating of the office, so various things come in. Originally, when I moved in in 1962, you can see this. I went down to the South Omaha Library, and I think for a dollar, I got seven copies of old New York Times from, from big times, like the Panic of 1907. This is one, 1929, obviously. But I wanted to put on the walls days of extreme panic in Wall Street, just as a reminder that anything can happen in this world. I mean, it, uh, it's instructive art, you can call it. <laughs> 